everybody it's Oliver the Ball Ball Pilot I hope you guys have been well now I haven't posted in about five or six weeks and I apologize for that but there are also a good couple of reasons for that extensive delay the first one being that I was so focused on getting the empennage kit done that I didn't want any distractions the second one being that I ended up injuring a couple of the elevator parts and had to order new parts and wait for them to come in that took about two weeks but i'm glad to report that the parts are in and i'm back on regular scheduled programming which includes keeping you guys updated on my progress to date so today what i'm going to do is recap the last five or six weeks well the parts where i actually got stuff done and then preview what's going to come next so let's get it so I feel like I'm about 80% done with the empennage kit. All the assemblies, most specifically the ribs, the spars and reinforcement plates have been riveted together and all are ready for their final coat of primer. Now, only after the final priming of the assemblies is complete can I finally start the long process of riveting the skins. However, to get to this 80% point, there were a bunch of small laborious tasks that had to be done. Let me talk about those for a bit. So, before we do the final priming of all the assemblies, those assemblies being the rudder, elevator, fin, and the horizontal stabilizer, the Takano Replica Instruction Manual calls for priming all the mating surfaces. What does that mean? Well, it means that every flat surface that comes in contact with another must be primed in order to prevent the kind of corrosion that can occur when two metal pieces are permanently affixed. Well, there are some important preliminary steps that must be taken prior to applying primer on aviation grade aluminum. The first being that we must thoroughly clean all the metal with acetone. Remember, all the parts are all tagged with labeling tape and the sticky residue from those labels must be removed prior to applying the primer. Now this is not a big deal but it does take quite a bit of time as every component of the kit is labeled both with marker ink and adhesive paper labels. So after removing all the labels, ink, and residue from the parts, I followed what seems to be a standard practice across the experimental build community, and that is, I washed all the metal in a special cleanser designed to help the primer stick to the metal. I chose a product called Precoat for the job because it eliminates a need for additional metal preparation processes and provides lots of corrosion protection. Also, it does a pretty bang up job of removing absolutely any residue that could still be on the parts. Also, at only $40 a bottle, it's pretty affordable. Now, one of the other reasons that I chose this product is because it is widely used by the Department of Defense, so I figured that if it's good enough for fighter jets, it'll probably be just fine for my small airplane. Oh, last but not least, Precoat is also very environmentally friendly and is readily biodegradable, so it requires no special procedures to dispose of. But wait, there's more prep work to be done. In addition to all the hyper cleansing, we must scuff off every surface that we intend to prime with a scuffing pad like Scotch Brite, the maroon colored version. You probably figured out by now that primer doesn't like to stick to shiny metal, so we need to do all that we can to help it out. And one of those things is by helping the metal to lose its slickness. So here I am scuffing the contact surfaces of the elevator ribs to get the shine off. Yeah, it's a pretty easy task, but it's so time consuming. Now, for the fun part, applying the primer with a can of self-etching primer. Now, I chose this brand of primer because it was recommended to me by now the builder, and I wasn't disappointed. The spray pattern is pretty good, and I got really great adhesion across all the parts. However, there were areas where the primer didn't stick at all. Now, I can't blame the primer for that, as I think I just didn't scuff those areas sufficiently. I'd estimate that I experienced peeling and scaling on about 10% of all the prime surfaces. But the fix was pretty easy. I just re-cleaned those areas with acetone and pre-coat and re-scuffed them extra hard and then reapplied the primer. That definitely did the trick. In all, I estimate that all this priming preparation took me about three weekends to get done. So about six full days in total. Like I mentioned before, this phase of priming is just the first of two phases that need to be done before we can close up the assemblies with their skins. The next phase involves dousing all the assemblies in an even heavier duty primer 
so that all the internal metal is protected from corrosion. Now this is a very toxic process which requires lots of preparation and time management. Now I think of all the tasks that assembling the empennage kit requires, priming is by far the least pleasant because it requires lots of preparation work and it's just so darn messy. But when you consider how much this process will preserve my investment, it's all well worth the effort. So now that you guys are up to date, let me tell you what comes next. So this weekend I'll be working on preparing the new elevator spars for priming and then countersinking their 20 plus holes to get them ready for flush rivets. Once I prime these parts, they'll be ready for pre-assembly and the final application of the nut and reinforcement plates. The semi-final step will be the riveting of the ribs to the spars. At that point, the elevators will be ready for final priming and I'll just need to get the horizontal stabilizer assembly riveted as a final step before doing the final priming push. So guys, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, before I get out of here, special shout out to the team at Flying Legends for being so supportive uh, since I signed up for the project. Also want to thank my friend and mentor Chuck for coming over and inspecting uh, my work and mentoring me just overall. And last but not least, I want to thank you guys for tuning in and cheerleading this project uh, as I go. Uh, for the next episode, I'm going to either do uh, a video on the final priming uh, phase or I may do a video discussing some of the primary tools that I've been using uh, to get the project along. Or what I could do is take your guys' advice and make a video based on what you guys want to see. So if there's something in particular you want me to talk about, just go ahead and leave a comment and I'll do my best to uh, make a great video that will answer all your questions. So thanks again, guys, and thanks for tuning in, and see you next time. Bye.